What is up everybody? In this video I'm going to be giving you my number one budget carbon plated racing shoe. Hey what is up everyone and welcome back to 40 Runs. How are we doing people? Let me know in the comments and while you're down it, are you looking for a carbon plated racing shoe or do you already have one? Let me know in the comments what's your favourite, what's your go to carbon plated racing shoe? Are you training in carbon plated shoes? Let me know in the comments, I'd be very interested to know. Now this is a, a sort of interesting hot topic that I wanted to do, um, tackle today in this video, because uh, the brands, the manufacturers have been bringing out some sort of cheaper versions of the hyper shoes. Um, they've been sort of spoiling us a little bit with some, I'm gonna call them budget uh, racing shoes. We're talking anything basically under 200 pounds, which is still, a lot of money um <laughs> there's a lot of value to be had you know well below 100 pounds but the shoes we're going to be talking about today are those sort of carbon plated shoes or plated shoes that are under 200 pounds i wanted to talk about them because there's a lot of interest in them at the moment as i say some of the brands have been coming out with some awesome shoes so let's get into which ones i prefer and which ones i think are the best Okay, so how this is going to work, I'm going to go through the shoes, but I'm not going to get too much into the stats and features because I want to back through this video as quick as we can because I know you've only got a little bit of time. So I'm going to put some stuff up either side of me uh, with all the stats and features and all that kind of thing um, as we go through the different shoes. Now, what makes a good budget running, a carbon plate running shoe for me is something that's uh, firstly makes you feel awesome, that is under £200. Um, that you can run fast in. Now you could argue there's other shoes out there that don't have plates in that you could do all of these things in, but I wanted specifically to talk about these carbon plated shoes. Uh, if you're new to carbon plated shoes, uh, a lot of the manufacturers are putting these sort of plates in to uh, sort of get a sort of kick as you go through your stride. Um, they're tuned up in different ways and they're working with different midsoles and they all have different feelings uh, when you're running with them. I'm going to get into that a little bit today uh, in terms of how each of them feel and hopefully I'll be able to give you some sort of, I don't know, pointers if you're looking for your sort of budget carbon plated racing shoe. So first up, let's talk about the Zoom Fly 3. Now I've included this even though this is about to be replaced by the Zoom Fly 4, so bear with me, but I want to include it because it's readily available as this video is made in May uh, 2021. You can get this on the Nike website. It's got a carbon plate in it and it is a relatively fast shoe. I know it is popular with some people. Um, I didn't really get on that well with it because I didn't like the weight. It's quite a heavy shoe and I found it quite unstable to a degree. I also wasn't a massive fan of the vapor weave in this shoe. I found it thicker and warmer than that. Um, and the overall package just didn't work for me in terms of budget carbon plated shoes. Uh, I got this to sort of training and to do a little bit of part running, but it never really hit the spot because there were sort of better alternatives that came out after it. You have to give Nike a bit of kudos for coming out with a carbon plated shoe at this price point, early doors. They came out of this, I say in 2020, but it just never lived up to the hype for me. But I do know a lot of people get on well with this shoe. Okay, next up is the Razor Elite uh, from Skechers. Uh, I'm a huge fan of Skechers if you're new to the channel. This thing weighs as much as a piece of paper. It's like five, six ounces. It's, it weighs nothing. Um, you've got a monomesh upper and it is just fast. It is super fast. Front loaded carbon plate in it with the hyperburst um, midsole nitrogen infused midsole from Skechers. And because it's so light, the turnover, the sensation of turnover is amazing in this shoe. I wouldn't wear this for anything more than 10K because I think, well, it just break my feet. But it just, if you like that sort of racing flat feel, it's like nothing of it. It's just literally a bit of midsole and a carbon plate and off you go. It is great, great fun. Uh, I did a video about it and I, and I liked it to be like a, a younger brother uh, of the Vaporfly because that is a fast shoe. And this is a fast shoe. Um, but it's not something I would wear for a marathon. I just think, I'd, well, I'd end up with broken ankles. But it is great fun and it is fast. Um, there's a few issues in terms of getting it here in the UK, but I know they're trying to get it here to the UK. Um, but this is definitely, if you're looking uh, for a sort of, yeah, fast 5K, 10K shoe, this is definitely one to consider. Next up, we've got the Magic Speed from Asics. Um, new out, interesting shoe. Didn't necessarily work for me. Um, I found it a little bit um, sort of uninspiring 
um, again, plated shoe, kidney shaped shoe, um, kidney shaped shoe, kidney shaped plate in it even, but it's not a full length plate. Again, front loaded um, with the flight foam blast, which is a little bit firmer than an overblast in terms of feeling. Uh, and I just didn't get the most out of it. I don't know whether, and I said it in the video, I don't know whether I'm not fast enough to run in this shoe, but it is an interesting shoe. And I think at the price point, again, it opens up a lot of doors to different people. If you're a big fan of Asics, you're gonna like it to a degree. I'm a big fan of Asics. But for me, it just didn't work. But that's not to say it's a bad shoe. I included it because it's in, it's in the price point of what we wanna talk about. It's got a great upper. The, the midsole, as you'd expect from Asics, is awesome. Um, the outsole's fab. It does a great job in terms of traction. Um, and yeah, the, the setup will work for some of you out there. It does feel a slightly firmer ride than I was expecting. But like I say, this will suit some of you, again, towards that maybe more sort of racing flat feeling. Um, it just feels a little bit lower to the ground and the setup like that. Yeah, but this is, this is definitely a good sort of budget carbon plated shoe, but I think it will suit only a limited number of people. So next up, we've got the Puma Nitro DVA. This is an awesome shoe, it really is. We've got the Nitrogen Infused um, foam, uh, lightweight foam, we've got a plate there, see that? Uh, Puma grip on the outsole, which is just amazing. They could have definitely shaved weight with this shoe uh, because they've made it very, very thick. But I think in terms of durability, again, we're talking about value today, people, this hits the spot. There have been some complaints about heel slippage in the shoe, I've not had that. Right, but I know some other reviewers have mentioned that, but I've not had that. I found if I tighten them up across the sort of mid foot point here and loosen here, I get it dialed in just right. There is an element of foam around there, but I've not had any of the issues that some others have um, found. Um, I like the structure around the eyelets, the upper's just awesome, um, just like the Pegasus Turbo 2. Pre, uh, please bring that shoe back, Nike. Um, and the overall setup is just great. It's, it's wide enough for most feet, fits true to size, and it just makes you feel awesome. Next up is the Flame from 361. I don't know if you've heard of 361. It's like a Chinese company, but they're pushing into the US and, and Europe. Um, We've got the Quick Flame midsole, uh, which is a uh, PU material. It's lightweight, and then you've got a plate running through the shoe. I don't know if you, yeah, you can see it, the Quick Flame in there. I've got some rock stuck in there, by the way, which is a little bit annoying. But you've got a mono mesh upper. It's plenty of room in there. The lacing's a little bit annoying. I would definitely recommend you switch them out, but it does fit true to size. There's enough padding around here, but what took my sort of attention with the shoe is the stability of the shoe. I really felt st um, stable in this shoe versus some of the other um, sort of carbon plated racing shoes. Plenty of grip on there um, from the uh, outsole. There have been some complaints with 361 shoes in the past about durability, but so far so good. Uh, but I've only done a couple of races in this shoe um, and distances in this shoe. But as you can see, I am sort of tearing it up a little bit on the outsole already along there. I mean, that's coming out, but that's just me with my bad running form. But overall, this shoe is great, great fun. Um, it didn't give me the sensation of like a, a, a rocker heel to toe. I just felt like I was sort of bouncing off of it. It wasn't like a heel to toe transition like some of the other shoes out there. But it is a great, great budget sort of carbon plated racing shoe. Next up is the Treyu Artist. Now this carbon plated monster, from a Treyu is very interesting because of the price point. Now, Treyu, if you don't know who they are, they're an awesome brand in Texas, and they come at making shoes and, and all that sort of stuff a little bit different. Uh, I could put, say, some information up on it. But in terms of how the shoe feels, it feels great. Um, it's got a very solid base underneath it. Um, it's a little bit soft and, I don't know, it just feels a little bit, Unstable is the wrong word, but on some of the sort of negative canvas, if you're going, I don't know about you, but where I live is residential and some of the drives and stuff are a little bit like this, where you're going over them and you can feel the movement in the shoe, but it is a quick shoe. It's a lightweight and you can feel the sort of pickup from the plate. Um, it's a lot of fun it, and that's the best way to describe it. It is a lot of fun. It's obviously got a high stack height on it, but I, yeah, it's just, it's just great fun, people. It's a good sort of, Half marathon, two marathon shoe, um, but also I think you could do some training runs in it. But yeah, it, it's a great fun, and that's why I included it in our list of sort of budget carbon plated racing shoes. Now the last one I'm going to stick in is going to be slightly controversial because it's not actually a carbon plated shoe; it's a TPU plated shoe, and that's the Speed, uh, which is still, I think, the number one 
sort of training and competition shoe in terms of plated shoes. It's just incredible. Now these are my older ones. I've got a new version of these. Oh, I've got a black pair. Um, but I wanted to show because they're sort of orange like the rest of the shoes. Have you noticed, apart from the Zoom Fly, that all those other shoes are orange? Interesting, no? But this is just a great shoe. Uh, we've got the Power Run midsole in it. Um, sorry, Power Run PB midsole in it. And it just heel to toe transition. It's just, oh, it's just fantastic. Then the TPU plate, which is not as stiff as a carbon plate. So you get that little flex. So it's not as hard on your feet. It's not as hard on your run as some of the carbon plate you choose out there. You do get that little bit of flex. So again, you get a little bit more versatility with it. Um, the feedback from the midsole is just epic fits true to size the upper is just awesome on this shoe and its overall package is just incredible and for 155 pounds this just smashes it out of the park but there can only be one winner now this is going to surprise some of you because you're going to think well Fordy's going to say the sock and his speed because he's been saying the sock and his speed for like a year well actually i'm going to go with the puma nitro dv8 as my top pick i didn't pick the sock and his speed because really it kind of shouldn't be in this sort of category because I did say budget carbon plated shoes. If you're looking to get into carbon plated shoes because you want to sort of see if they work for you and that sort of thing, I think it's only fair that we push the speed to one side, but I would recommend the speed people. I would still recommend the speed. It's just an epic shoe. But to be fair, we're going to pick the Puma DV8 Nitro. I love the responsiveness from the midsole. It actually reminds me of the Stockany and Dolphin Speed. The plate kicks in, but I feel like it kicks in sort of at a lower speed, uh, if that makes any sense. Let me know in the comments if you understand what I mean. I just feel like I'm getting the benefit of it at the lower speeds, because some of these carbon plated shoes, I don't think I run fast enough in them to get the most out of them. But this, every time I put this on, I just run fast and I feel awesome in it. And that's what works. I've had no problems in terms of stability, um, I think the TPU, a lot of insert in the back does work. The upper's just fab. And the whole package, yeah, it just works. It's wide, it's, it's a good price point, plenty of durability with the upper. And that's why this is my top pick for best budget carbon plated racing shoe. So there you go, guys, that's it. Hope that was useful, interesting video. Now I'm sure the manufacturers and brands are gonna continue down this path, offering sort of value um, carbon plated shoes for us because of the sort of popularity of the hyper shoes that we have on the market, uh, including the Endorphin uh, and the Adios Pro and all those sort of other shoes that have come out. But I wanted to do this video, it's an interesting video because of these budget or sort of different price point shoes have come out. Uh, and again, big love to all the manufacturers for trying to bring that sort of technology to sort of more people, which I appreciate as an everyday runner. I think not everybody can go out and spend 200 plus on a pair of running shoes. A lot of people can't even afford a pair of running shoes. So again, big love to the manufacturers for trying to bring the price point a little bit lower and bring it out to more people. So well done. All you guys, I'm excited to see what Nike do with the Zoom Fly 4. And also the Tempo, um, ne ne tempo Next Percent, if I can get my words out. That wasn't a shoe that worked for me, but I know a lot of people really, really love that shoe. Um, it'd be interesting to see which direction they go with when they update that as well. So again, that's another shoe that we can talk about further down the line. But that's it, people. I hope that was useful. Let me know in the comments. I'm sure you will. And I'll catch you guys later.